A cold November day sets in across much of the country. Snow, clouds, and cold weather. And some of you might have noticed that little blob up there in Idaho. When I first saw that, I thought, is that a thunderstorm? Is that a volcano? Well, let's take a closer look. We start out with the morning imagery. You can see fog and stratus in the Snake River Plains. But as we get into evening, that's going to be mountain wave activity coming off of the Salmon River Mountains and the Sawtooths. So, no need to worry. Yellowstone has not gone off. That's just going to be a little bit of dense cirrus up there in Idaho. There is a lot of high pressure covering much of the U.S. Ridge all the way down into Texas. And, of course, east of the ridge, northerly flow. Now, it is a little bit nippy out there, 30s and 20s, but it could be a lot worse. We could be seeing temperatures below zero. Thankfully, nothing like that. But considerable snow from Minneapolis, Fargo, Des Moines, all the way back towards upstate New York. And close to this surface low, which is now occluded, we've got a little warm tongue working northward. And that's keeping the precipitation as rain all the way from Cleveland up to Detroit. Further south, there's the new wave along the front. And south of that, temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. A little bit of thunderstorm activity off Wilmington and Charleston. And that cold front is finally moving on off to the east and being pushed by that northwesterly flow. Once again, some of that going all the way down into Mexico, where they have north winds, 20 knots there. I'm not sure if that's Tampico or Veracruz, one of the two down there. And up there in Nevada, we've got the northwesterly flow starting to set in. You can see those wind gusts coming up to about 20 knots, and that will be working into the California deserts and raising the threat for Santa Ana conditions. And that's right up there on the Storm Prediction Center website, critical fire weather conditions on Wednesday for Southern California. And we did cover a little bit about that in the supporter stream yesterday. But there's the band of strong winds coming down through the Nevada deserts going forward into the overnight hours and into tomorrow during the day. You can see those sustained winds up there near 20 to 30 knots and starting to approach the passes and the San Bernardino Mountains out there. And let's see where that peaks. It's going to be about around sunset tomorrow. You can see some 20 to 30 knot plots there. And just running that forward, you can kind of see the offshore flow as the drier air heads off the coasts. And then looking at the rest of the country and up there in Canada, there's the next push of cold air coming down into Alberta. Once again, temperatures back behind it, not that cold. Looks like teens, but there will be some wet bulbing and some polar air generation back behind it where we get the radiational cooling. So we'll be contending with that over the next few days. And there's the 1048 millibar high there over Yukon. We've uh, discussed that a little bit over the past couple days. Heading out there into eastern Canada, not very much going on. Northwesterly gradient. And the more recent push of polar air showing up there over Ontario and Quebec. All right, let's take a quick look at the upper air. I know some of you are probably like, uh, I don't want to look at that. But, you know, this is the key to what's happening. This is what shapes the weather at the surface. This has a huge impact. And Okay, yeah, I just had my dinner come in. This is a late show, obviously, so let's go ahead and press on. We've got this strong jet topping the ridge out over Alaska, and that shapes up into a northwesterly flow into the U.S. We've got the depressed heights out there from Hudson Bay down to the north central U.S. And that's a result of the very deep cold air over that part of the country. Then we have this cutoff low out around the Gulf of Alaska, and that's just spinning. And as we pointed out, that's carrying most of the moisture, the atmospheric rivers back towards the northwest and keeping that clear of the coast. And further south, this other jet segment across the Ohio River Valley, and that will be heading out towards the eastern U.S., and then just kind of a quick preview of what's happening. And if you look up there north of Alaska, strong jet max, 
that's another chunk of energy coming down the backside of that trough. And we're not going to be done with the weather in the eastern U.S. until that jet max is out of the picture. And that will take a couple days. And finally, there it is. That's going to be Sunday going into Monday. Most of the energy is off the east coast. Strong jet max out east of New York. That's going to be about 160, 180 knots. And things quiet down across much of the rest of the country. But we're starting back up with the positive EPO pattern, the Pacific opening back up this weekend. And that will be the case through much of next week. And that may help temper some of these Arctic outbreaks, although the GFS shows things are getting really meridional, very wavy towards the end of next week. The European model not really doing that so much. So we're going to have to check it back in on that later this week to see what's happening. The models are disagreeing on these details. One little question mark is going to be later next week. This southern stream low right there. The European model going a little bit more aggressive with that and leaking that up with some moisture over Texas. That could produce some severe weather. But again, that's just one model. The CFS... Not doing anything like that. The GDPS, the Canadian model, is a little bit slower with that solution. So we're talking about this low way down here. And obviously that comes from deep in the Pacific. So we're just not going to know what's going to go on with that for at least several more days. Time to talk about some temperature extremes, such as my sandwich here, which is cooling off very rapidly. So we're going to try to wrap this up here in... It's already 6.43 p.m. Central, so we need to get this out the door. We're looking for a warm day tomorrow in Florida, 84 at Melbourne, contrasting with 4 degrees up there in the higher elevations of Northern California. For Thursday, not much to be seen on the map, but that cold air will be coming down through the Great Plains. So by Friday, we start to see some record lows. These are pretty much what we've been seeing over the past few days, groupings of cold weather from Nebraska to Idaho. And by Saturday, the cold weather spreads from Texas to Illinois, teens from the Amarillo area all the way over towards Paducah, and some cold air settling in where we have that plateau high out west. Sunday, we start a slow moderating trend, but cold air Still hanging on across much of the Midwest, all the way down towards Mississippi. And we're slow to get rid of that cold air. Even on Monday morning, starting out very cold in the Appalachians, and still 24 there in central Mississippi. And finally, by Tuesday, we apparently return to seasonal normals, but this is almost a week out. So most of these forecasts are going to be biased towards climatology. A quick look around the country, starting out with Texas, Louisiana. There's that northwesterly flow coming in. As we move further to the east, we get into the Merck. IFR, marginal VFR, all the way from Atlanta up towards Virginia. And some cold air damming right in this area. You can see the cold temperatures around Raleigh, Asheville, Columbia. And that's where the cold air has been locked in place as that surface low approaches from the west. So that's going to be the cold air mass, the warm front, located pretty much close to the coast right there. And the surface low located around, I guess it would be northeast of Albany. And further up north, that's where we pick up some of the winter weather. Looks like the Rain has changed over to snow at Detroit. Lots of snow throughout much of Michigan, northern Indiana, and Ohio. And, of course, a bunch of it out there in New York, where conditions are going downhill. The rain-snow transition line appears to be in southern Pennsylvania, where we pick up some freezing rain. And that transition zone runs about, about like that, just north of New York south of Poughkeepsie, and south of Windsor Locks. And that little area freezing precip right there in southern Pennsylvania. 
And if we follow that south in the Delmarva, it looks like a little coastal low right around here. And further south, I see even lower pressures down to 30 inches right there. So at the mesoscale, things are a little bit more complex. So a good thing to do with your surface chart is correct it. And you would take this inverted trough right here and open it up just a little bit. So I'm not sure if that warm front actually connects back up into it. But, you know, that would be a secondary feature that you would want to watch. And the main weather system still off to the west. So it looks like conditions are still going downhill across much of the northeast. And that'll do it for our Tuesday edition of Forecast Lab. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.